What's going on everyone? My name is MG The Future. I want to thank you for joining me today on my channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a brief overview of Reason 10. To provide context for that, um, I've used Reason 1.0 a very long time ago. And I kind of followed its progress up to 2, 2.5 especially. That was a major update for a lot of the people from my producer peer group. Then 3, and somewhere between 3 and 6, I used it less and less, or I should say intermittently, at different studios and different fellow producers' houses. So, for me to jump in on it at this particular point in time, I was very surprised and welcome to all of the new features that I missed out on <laughs> over all of those years. Because Reason 10 is finally in the stage or in the vision that I had for it when I was using it regularly or trying to learn it. Reason 10 is one of those first programs that had the quality, the GUI, and the sound set that kind of made it easy for a lot of people to gravitate to. However, on the flip side of that, for me as a beginner at that time, some of the limitations that it had made it something that I didn't use all the time as a sample-based hip-hop producer, um, especially getting audio tracks into it or the lack thereof especially some of the tricks you have to use with things like NNXT to chop samples, which I didn't know then, but I completely understand now. So there's a lot of little nuanced things about that, and I'm very excited to start doing videos to kind of offer that to the Reason and Propellerheads community, because I know in modern times, there's a lot of techniques that I've taught in other platforms and in other programs that it doesn't seem to be available to Reason users. And I have a couple of my subscribers who asked me to do just that. So here I am with a full working copy of Reason 10. Um, you can check it out. Their websites, of course, propellerheads.se. They're currently having a sale right now if you want to grab it for $100 less than usual, as well as their rack extensions, which are all on sale right now if you need particular sounds or a palette to help you create. Now, as far as these rack extensions, I think that's really cool that they did that. But then they opened up their platform and allowed us to add VSCs. That's one that was most interesting to me because then it was like, hey, I could really use Reason to some capacity in my workflow, even if it's something as simple as creating custom sounds for kits or creating custom sounds to sample into my hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Reason 10. They're doing something different, um, making you log in to launch the program. I don't know if there is a mechanism around that, I guess that's under more options, but I'll check that out later because I'm assuming they have to if you have an offline studio machine. So I'm going to log in and just kind of give you guys a brief overview. This might be more nostalgic for some of us who used to use it over 10 years ago or any you know variation of. If you stumbled across my video and it's your first time seeing Reason, I'm going to cover some of the things to kind of get everyone up to speed if you've used other software. So when you look at Reason like this, <laughs> and it took me a few minutes to get used to earlier, I was like, yo, there's so much going on, but not really. Do not let it intimidate you. They've actually made it way more aesthetically pleasing and easier to navigate, especially with the windows if you have multiple, multiple monitor support. I'm on an iMac, so I don't, not yet at least. So I'm going to focus on one element at a time to get, you know, everyone familiar. So this is the sequencer area. Anytime you create a new track in Reason, it behaves just like any other program. They're going to show up down here with the mute, solo, arm to record, etc. Across the top is going to be your snap, which is good for creating pattern blocks or sequences. And they have the divisions we expect to see in all of our programs. Or if you're trying to JDILA it out, you can turn snap off. I'm going to have edit mode, which will engage the clip that you record with your MIDI controller, or if you're drawing clips, um, you would pretty much recall the piano roll feature. Then there's the tools to move around, erase, draw clips, extend clips, etc. They have a dedicated automation lane. They have a dedicated block lane, which allows you to create blocks or scenes to test out different ideas. I'm a linear composer, so I'm going to be using the song mode. Across the bottom, of course, you have your quantize on record, which makes it sound like I know what I'm doing when I actually do drums. <laughs> then you got the different times, you know, bar, bars and beats and navigation, a very dope metronome and a pre-click if you need it. 
um, your transport, and all of that. This is this particular main uh, view. You can even pull up a MIDI or a on screen MIDI controller if you need it, which I think is dope. That wasn't there before. You pull up the groove pool, and you know I'm gonna have to do some videos on that because I'm one of those guys who are big on using grooves from references to make our music sound more livelier and having a vibe. So once I figure that out in this version, I'll definitely be putting out micro content for these features that apply to hip hop producers, lo-fi producers, and even you know some of our EDM and trap people as well. Um, so that's that, that's the sequencer view and across the bottom is the permanent transport. Um, the next logical thing to jump into is going to be rack view. <laughs> and this is probably the most intimidated, intimidating view for a person who's never seen Reason before, or like when I started, I've never been in a studio in the capacity of hooking up things. So rack view on this template is empty with four sins, very familiar. And their sins are some beautiful reverbs, plate, room, and echo very similar to the rolling joints and two delays, I guess. Um, and this is all routable and reroutable. And that's what made Reason unique and ahead of its time. It also makes it very powerful when creating custom patches. And also we used to manipulate it in such a way where we would bypass the Reason mixer and go straight to our converters. I don't know if I'm gonna do that because it's not necessary now with their new mixer. But um, if you hit tab, <laughs> you unlock a real monster. Now, back in the day, we would kind of have to manage this a lot more, especially for like side chain and CV gaining the ARPs. And um, forgive me if I'm talking about things you might not be familiar with, but basically you route and hook up everything. You could bus out different instruments if they have multiple outputs or multiple layers. You have full control of your sound, which this makes this very um, desirable. However, as a beginner, it was daunting. So with this being rack view, every instrument you use or every uh, track that you use creates a new element and then you chain them together. So I'm going to show you a brief example of that. I'm going to double click on instruments here and I'm going to navigate to what kind of sounds I want. They have quite a few new ones in this particular version that I was getting familiar with. And also you got our VSTs. Now, if you've been following me on my channel, I went trigger happy and freed up almost 400 gigs of space. In doing that, I accidentally <laughs> deleted my Omnisphere library, <laughs> so I can't open Omnisphere right now. Um, uh, we'll do Serum. So I believe we could take a screenshot or an image and put it here to represent our plugins. But of course, there's a little open button here on this module. When you flip it over, you're going to see it's routed to this particular device, which is our audio or mix device which gets routed to the mixer, which I'll show you in a second. And then you have options for gating and CV if you're into that modular stuff. Um, and you also do audio in, which is interesting because I think you can use serum effects that way. Anyway, I'm gonna expand this. I am going to open up serum and it'll bring serum up. The first time in my life that one of my dreams have come true in terms of audio software, which would be reason. So, you know, it, <laughs> it changes things for a lot of people that we can do this now. What's really dope about reason it sounds really good of course i've always said that about it especially with uh, drum samples um for one reason or another however now that we have these kind of things in here and we can create combinations of instruments that's going to take things to another level um but to just keep things moving along so let's say you did bring an instrument now when you go back to your sequencer you will have a track for that instrument and if you need another track, let's say some drums, we click on instruments, double click on drums, it automatically creates a new track, it automatically sets up it in a container for the mix to go to the mixer, and then you go to the sequencer, and it automatically has a track. So it's very intuitive now for anyone to engage it. You just have to know what you're looking for and how to navigate. Um, so I'm gonna minimize the sequencer. Kong has different presets, so you can hit this little open button, 
and it will bring up the different Kong presets on the left if you're not here already. And you can use what they've created as pre-made kits. Or you can go into these individually where there's different waveforms and you can change and search and play and load your own kits basically for lack of better words. Tons of stuff. And even wave files, which is these little red icons. So it's very dope. Also, it's one of the uh, instruments, once I learned how to flip it and access that, where you actually have drum synthesizers, a baby version of NNXT, and um, different effects and things to really allow you to get prolific at drum design. A lot of my subscribers are asking me, how do you create your own drum kits? Well, major key alert, if you get Reason and Kong, it has the modules and the effects that are unique to uh, creating very specific sounds and textures thought about for drum design. Kong in itself. You can use it to program drums and load samples, but then you can take that a step further, layer up multiple, you know, like your, your vinyl drum, your synthesized drum, you know, your Foley sounds. You can layer them here and change their start and end times and do all of that processing and pitching and enveloping and affecting and it gets ridiculous. So I'm going to do a lot more research on everything it has to offer as of now and probably put out another sound design tutorial using Reason 10 for drums, 808s, and maybe like a specialist sounds like a custom rack effects for like the Drake or Noah piano or pad. So that's that. So you just keep double clicking, you keep building, you look for the folder icons to navigate through sounds, and that's pretty much rack view. Now, there will be cer certain instances such as side chain and things like that where you're going to have to tab it around and route things separately. Notice that each of the Kong pads have a gate and a in and a gate out and different features for different uh, modules. And what these usually are in reference to or dealing with is the different utilities you have and LFOs and additional uh things you can use to affect those sounds, or at least the playback of those sounds. And of course you have individual mono outs, which is crazy. Um, because if, if this particular utility Kong doesn't give you everything you need per pad and you want it to use one of your uh, third party reverbs specifically on the snare, you can then route it to its own audio track or you know mixer track and add that third party effect as a send or insert. Um, I'm going to figure out how to do all of that and I'll teach it as I go. All right. So that's pretty much the double click and drag and drop workflow. If you want to add effects, you go to effects folder. Reason has some of the best in the game. One of my favorite is going to be this bad boy right here for my lo-fi and my hip hop heads. You just drag and drop it onto the instrument you want to affect. It automatically puts it in the right place. It automatically routes it correctly. And then it just affects the sound in real time. We don't have to worry about inputs and outputs as much anymore. So a lot of my people were wondering about like the Good Hertz plugins and um, SP404. This particular module emulates different things to allow us that kind of texture. So again, when you think about this from a sound design perspective, it becomes very powerful. And now that it has audio tracks, you can render those sounds and put them in anything you want, really. All right, we'll get to that in due time. Utilities, we talked about that. Players, we talked about that. These are kind of like MIDI effects. So they got dual pregios, which I haven't used these yet. They weren't there when I was using Reason. But if you've watched me in the other platforms where I have like scale conform or velocity conform or even arpeggio, you have that here, which will allow you to set up a certain type of module to help you stay within scale and chords, which will help you come up with different melodies and stuff really quickly using a MIDI controller. So I appreciate that they thought about that and started to add those kind of locks and features because then it'll make a person like me who's more prolific with the piano roll <laughs> to actually pretend like I know what I'm doing on the actual keyboard. Speaking of keyboards, Reason is the only program that I've had, and I've had many, that automatically map the Cork Triton tactile. And um, the transport works without me having to dive into the menus, the faders, the sliders, everything works without a lot of effort. And I really appreciate that. 
because then I can just focus over here when I'm recording parts and navigate and go back and you know overdub and all these things without having to click on the mouse. Um, that's pretty much it though for the rack. The rack is way more improved and if you start running out of space it'll put it to the next one and then you get like this bird's eye view so you can go up and down you can you can start rewiring things you don't have no business rewiring it just gets really nutty and um if i find any of those routings that are useful for people like us and what we're doing i'll bring them up all right so that's that now i've created these random tracks and what's happening to them is that they're going to this mixer and you'll see that there's a Kong mixer here. And then there's that pad. Let's make sure we arm this track. Is there a quick way to do that? I'll just jump back into the sequencer. Whew. Now this is gonna be interesting because it has so much, like it's a real channel strip. You can flip the effects order that are pre-made into this channel strip. You have a built-in compressor. Um, and Reason has separate rack compressors too, but just on your channel strip, you don't necessarily have to do that because they thought of us, like some people just wanna load the instance of what they're trying to play and go. But if you wanna touch it up, you do have the strip compressor, the strip filters, the strip EQ, and then the sends, just tons of stuff. I'm not sure what these are yet, these rotaries. I see what this is. So these are master inserts. I'll figure this section out. I'll read it in more detail later. And then you got the eight sins and our four sins that are in our rack earlier, which are these guys at the top. You'll notice that they're already there. So on this particular sound, all I have to do is enable that plate reverb by turning it blue. or that delay, because then we'll hear it. And adjust the levels and things like that. Everything comes to life. You can then change the presets on those modules or create your own modules. It looks like it goes at least up to eight. And that's with this mixer. Like I said, you can unwire everything and add way more strings of effects. They have something called Combinator, which allows you to self-contain your instrument and all the routing effects into one easy uh, controllable module so you can minimize it and just have it on one mixer track if you want to. So there's levels to it, but this addition, which I never used or had in previous versions, is nutty. And of course it's modeled similarly to the SSL if I'm not mistaken. So on the master channel, which has all these effects on the far right, you automatically get the SSL bus that you could turn on, which always sounds great and helps you glue everything together. Just sounds good. So they did a, a very good job on this. It's way more user friendly, I believe. We just gotta get used to the shortcuts for you to jump between these different views. I believe on Mac it does use the F keys to allow you to jump through these and have different views and perspectives. And there's also a situation where you can um, hit these little arrows on the right hand corner to kind of pop them out and put them full screen and put them somewhere else if you need to. If you get tired of it, you can just close it and it'll return back to where it's from. Boom. So that's Reason 10 in a nutshell. A brief overview for some of us who are already nostalgic about it and use the old versions. This is the, the meat and potatoes of what's so different now and why it's a little bit more desirable because they answered a lot of our requests including importing audio tracks. Speaking of which, to kind of get used to what it does, I would recommend going to the file menu and opening up the different demo songs, and you can download more. I was checking out this one earlier, and I was seeing how they were routing things and doing stuff. And you can see there's plenty of tracks, there's plenty of automation and pitch bends, and everything expands, everything's clean, everything's color-coded. They got their crash, which is an actual audio track that's listening to my microphone. <laughs> it's just it's just dope. It's very dope. And it sounds beautiful.
mixer is a full mixer too. Like outside of us reconnecting those wires and everything we used to have to do, you can set up your buses here. You can create buses and effects or create your actual tracks and everything from the mixer like you would any other program. So they, 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 uh, they figured it out. All right, so let me do something a little bit more interesting. Let me show you guys the last time I used Reason and how terrible I was. Um, I have a folder somewhere and I think, so I started keeping track of music 2002 to 2003. Um, Reason could be in this folder. Not yet. 2004, maybe, maybe. All right, 2005, I gotta have finished projects. Hmm, I do. I just don't know what they're called. I know when I start making a lot of them though, because reason reminds me of a particular time. Here, 2006, I use it a whole lot. So I'm gonna open up Black Moon. It's a French sample. It's a familiar sample. But what we used to have to do back in the version of Reason where this was created was use Recycle to create loops or slice marks and load it into Dr. Rex. And then I would have to use multiple Dr. Rexes for different parts of the sample. Way back then, people didn't give me the context of using an NXT to chop samples, which like I said, I'm gonna do a video on. So now with the audio tracks even and the integration between the new Octorex and things, I don't have to make beats like this no more, but I just want to kind of show you where my mind was at back then, almost over 10 years ago. So I had this happen earlier on a different project. There's no sound. That no sound feature is a routing issue that I don't know how to automatically fix. And if you have old projects and you used to use Reason, Nine times you're going to run into this problem too, so I'm going to show you how to fix it. Um, what was I going to say before that? Let's fix it first. So I had the Scream Distortion Unit, so this particular beat was made around Reason 2.5 or 3, right? One of those eras. Yeah, I can tell by the effects I'm using. It wasn't a, a much later version than that. It had this mastering effect when it came out. This is what's not being sent to the mixer, although mixer is here. So I'm gonna turn this around using my tab key. And this is the actual mixer where all my drum modules and Dr. Rex modules are going. This is then being fed into the mastering. So I'm gonna unplug this from mastering. I'm gonna to try to bypass this and go straight to the mix channel. We got sound. So if you open up an old Reason project and you did have the mastering combinator or any combinators part of your mixer setup and you're not hearing anything, until I figure out exactly why that is, just bypass it from the Reasons mixer that we used to use back in the day and go straight to the, uh, the container for your mixer, which is called Mix, which looks like this guy right here, which in this context of this old beat, it took everything and put it in one track rather than all these elements being individual tracks, which I can figure out and route later if I want to. Um, I've got a baseline, I got the Dr. Rex's, I got some delay and EQ. I almost knew what I was doing back then. <laughs> Let's turn it on to the sequencer. I'm very happy this file saved the samples. That was what I was gonna say earlier. It was self-contained, which is another dope thing in the bigger picture. Let's go to this mixer, come on.
I said I had to use a different Dr. Rex to get it into a verse or That felt good listening to that over 10 years ago. That's crazy. <laughs> so I have some history with it. I actually have Reason Beats before that. I just don't know which folders they're in. So I could probably do an RMS search on my computer later and um, bookmark them. So that's that one. I'm looking for some that may have been compositions so we can hear some of the old instruments and kind of compare it to where we are in life as far as this goes. Um, the new sounds that we have. Huh. Yes, I do have one. <laughs> so this particular beat had a lot of tracks for the time, especially what year this was made. Um, and it has my old drum samples, which I'm going to figure out how to get out of here. Um, a lot of subtractor, just basic synthesis and the ARPs. So yeah, Combinator had to have come out when I made these sets of beats because it's combinating a lot of stuff that wouldn't have been in Reason 2.5. The drums is what I'm looking for. Where are you hiding? This was on Lucky, Lucky Enough that this particular track, when it opened, it went correctly to the mix. So not all of your old Reason projects are going to have the problem that my Black Moon project did. So yeah, these are my Neptune kits. My old Neptune kits that we used to use way back then. Okay. Let's play it from the top. I'm not going to keep you guys too much longer than this. I just wanted to give you a different range and let you know that I'm just not coming out of nowhere. I've actually used Reason before. I just got to get up to date with how to make this better and do the modern stuff. the bottom like other programs. cracking up because how old the song is and how terrible it is but um yeah man i'm feeling super nostalgic this month man um 2017 the ending of it is pretty epic i mean we got fl studio on mac we got reason 10 with the open ended you know we can put anything in it we want we can take anything out that we want out with the new export and audio features um harrison mix bus reminds me of cool edit pro and Isotope RX is Cool Edit Pro with all those features just in the editor window. Like, I, I really went way back as far as my current setup and workflow. And um, my goal is, to, like I said, to help out the Reason and Propellerheads community and also to show these concepts to all the communities because I'm going to try to teach it in a universal and general way. But anyway, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, if you have any comments or questions or concerns, let me know in the box below. If you're already a Reason user or used to be a Reason user and there's any particular topic you want me to consider in future upcoming videos, definitely let me know. This will be the time to do it. Um, if you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe. Thank you. Until next time, peace.